Hello, this is uh, third clip for the chapter four, and now this is the last clip. Uh, the the thing we left is um, we need to compute n now n and i in the calculator, which is the uh, um, number of periods, number of years, and the interest rate. Now, uh, when you compute the uh, n and i, this is uh, very very important, especially. Uh, very important to keep the track, to keep the direction of the cash flow, like inflow, outflow, because if you really uh, put the wrong direction, then you will have no answers. So suppose you know that you will deposit $100 and receive 121 in two years, what rate are you earning? Now, you make a deposit 100, receive 121 in two years, what rate? So what, what is the interest rate? What is the I, right? Let's go for it. So mathematically, so let's solve, like say, so future value equals to present value plus one plus R part of the T's. Now we need to find R. So let's drive, like rearrange this as of R. Like, so one plus R part of the T's equals to future value divided by present value, right? And then you get 1 plus r equals to future value divided by person value 1 over t, right, the exponents so your interest rate will be future value divided by person value part to the 1 over t minus 1 so for this example future value equals 221 Present value equals to 100, t equals to 2. Just plug a number into this formula. r equals to 121 divided by 100. Part to the 1 over 2, so it's half, basically square root, minus 1, which is 1.21 square root minus 1. And 1.21 will be 1.1 square, square root minus 1. So it's going to be 1.1 minus 1, so it's going to be 0 0.1, which is 10%. I mean, we know the answer already, and we just confirm it. Now, let's use calculator. Now, let's draw the timeline. You have two years, right? One and two, zero. You make a deposit $100, and you receive 121. What is the I, right? Four. And you need to track the right direction of the cash flow. Now, you make a deposit, so the direction is outflow and you withdraw in two years so direction is inflow so you have to put negative 100 for PV and 121 positive for future values so let's go back to calculator again you see again you have to use this one right now the problem here is again from zero to two years you deposit 100 and you receive 121, what is the R? Then, now, again, N equals to 2, so 2, N, then you have N equals to 2. Again, you have to clear the calculator first, right? So to clear it, second, and C, L, L, T, V, M, right? Clear the calculator, so second, clear the T, V, M. And then, so 2 n n equals to 2. We don't know i, so we need to get it. PV is negative 100, so you put 100 first, and then change the sign using this key, and press PV, then you will have PV equals to negative 100. And then uh, let's, uh, let's PMT is always 0, so just the 0 PMT for this chapter, and PMT equals to 0. And future value is 121, so press 121 and press future value. Then you have future value equals 121. Now you need to compute the CPT. Press the variable we want to know, i over y interest rate. You should have i over y equal to 10. Okay. okay. That's what we should do. Now, if you do not have the right direction of cash flow. So suppose you put just 100, not the negative 100, say like a positive 100 here. If you compute like that, both 100, then actually 
you have error messages. Because, you know, to make the 10% return, so the return means you invest something and you receive something, right? So, there may, sh you should have at least one negative, like outflow, and at least one inflow to make returns. If both positive, we just in, like receive, then we don't have any seed money, so we don't have returns. Same thing, we just invest and no receiving, we don't have returns. So you should actually have at least one inflow and at least one outflow to make returns. In this case, you know, just think about the directions here. You know, negative hundred, which is the deposit, so your cash flow from you to bank, so it's outflow for you. 121 withdrawal from bank to you, so it's inflow for you. Keep track on it, you got a right answer. So that's the things. Now, you know, you can, you can if you just uh, enter both positive, then your calculator charts, you should have errors, right? Now, let's solve for N. Suppose you know that you will deposit $100, will receive $121, you're gonna make 110%. How many years will you receive $121 basically? From this, you need to find this T, right? 121 equals to 100 times 1.1 part of the T is X. And unknown is exponent. And you need to solve it. So let's rearrange it with respect to T now. If you don't know the exponents, then we need to actually take a look to get it. So first of all, one plus r part of t equals to future value divided by present value. First of all, and then take the natural log for both. Right there, and this is t times log, log 1 plus r equals to log future value divided by present value. So t equals to, in fact, log future value divided by present value divided by log 1 plus r. If you plot number here, t equals to now it's log 121 divided by 100 divided by log. 1 plus 0 0.1, right? It's going to be log 1.21 divided by log 1.1. And this is going to be log 1.1 square divided by log 1.1. And this is going to be 2 times log 1.1 divided by log 1.1. So it's cancelled out. The answer is 2 years. So that's why t equals 2. So that's mathematical solution. Now, it looks really complicated, so, you know, we'll be worried about that if it is a math class, but we don't have to because we have calculator. Now, we don't need to use, in fact, the, the mathematics, we basically use calculator. So, let's use it. Okay, so suppose here, again, we use this one, right? Again, you have to clear it again, second. VRL TVM, you clear the previous, you know, right, memories. And then now we don't know this N, right? So we don't know N, we know I over Y is 10%, so interest rate 10%. Okay. PV 100, but it's negative 100, right? Again, you make deposit $100. Receive 121 in some day. So it's 100 again. Change the sign and press PV. Then you have PV equal to negative 100. PMT is equal to zero always for this chapter. By the way, from next chapter, PMT equals to not something. So we're gonna learn it. And then future value 121. Okay, so if, if you compute now 
and you should give n equal to 2. So we got the answer. So it's, it's kind of you know, not very difficult problem actually you can get uh, if you use finding a calculator. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. So this is uh, the end of the chapter 4. Now the chapter 4 is again a pretty important chapter because you have to understand the concept of the present value, future value, and and that's the things that we're going to use like time value money for the all class in the for the future, right? So, um, and then the next chapter we're going to actually learn not the lump sum problem. So this chapter is one time cash flow. We only have one deposit or one withdrawal now. We are going to learn how to compute the present value, future value with multiple cash flows.